traders, I'm excited to present three fresh ideas today and also two very specific swing trading strategies. These ideas hold the potential for significant and substantial directional moves this week. And rest assured, as always, I'm also going to be providing to you my precise and actionable trade plans outlining my exact entry and exit targets. But right before I do that, a quick side note. You'll notice in my ideas today that they cover both the long and short side in a large cap, large cap and two small caps. Now, it's not a fluke, it's by design, because when I first started, I focused on where I first discovered and developed an edge, and that was actually shorting small caps intraday. But as I grew more consistent and more profitable, I leveraged those skills to develop and expand on my playbook and sources of edge. So today that includes intraday trading, both long and short, along with swing trading in both directions. But remember, it all starts with mastering one setup, one strategy, and with the correct foundation, and then slowly building on top of that um, in order to create a sustainable trading career, instead of just being a one-trick pony, for example. So, you know, I, I, I'd love to know what setup um, and what strategies you guys are all working on at the moment, or what was the first setup and strategy that brought you edge and consistency. Drop it in the comments, I'd love to know. So the first idea is going to be a consolidation breakout, and this is in the video. So let's take a look at the chart. Now you might all remember um, and recall the idea I shared in AFIRM in November of last year. Um, and just from a technical analysis perspective, it actually bears some similarities. Um, now the same goes for the setup I shared in, in Celsius and in DraftKing, just to name a couple more. Um, why is that? Well, you have rising key moving averages, um, and the stock trading in a very tight range with upward momentum near a critical breakout level and inflection area. What I like most about this setup and the strategy in general is the very defined risk reward that it offers me. And while each stock's technicals differ, they are similar from a charting and psychological perspective. Now, my plan for NVIDIA is very straightforward this week. Um, you know, I noticed it displayed very impressive relative strength versus the overall market in the first week of the year. Um, so I think if the market catches a bid in the short term, I'm not concerned about what happens over the quarter um, or even over the, the, the next month. I'm just focusing on the short term key levels and looking to react um, and picking up on small nuances, right? So if the market catches a bid in the short term, as in this week, um, I think NVIDIA could definitely expand and increase on its relative strength and potentially blow past this 500 key level. So what's my exact plan? I'm looking to get long near 500 if the stock confirms a breakout over this critical level in terms of staying power and volume. Once I see confirmation, I'm initially going to look to enter long versus the day's low because I wouldn't want to see the stock uh, reverse and confirm a false breakout. So that is why my stop would be at or near the day's low. But given the length of this consolidation, um, I'm going to be looking for a multi-day momentum if and when the stock does break out and confirm that and I'm long. So I plan to take off a significant um, portion of my long into a one ATR up move. The stock's ATR, I believe, is around $12.32 plus minus. Um, so that would put it, um, I'm looking at around the 510, 512-ish area. So roughly around one ATR, I'm looking kind of in that zone to take off a significant portion. Uh, thereafter, I'm gonna look to trail the rest of my position for up to a maximum of three days and I'm going to be using the hourly chart, higher lows on the hourly chart um, to trail my stop. That's what I like to do uh, with this specific strategy. Um, then the last two ideas are different, and they are short plays in small caps, AIMD and BNZI. So both of these stocks, AIMD and BNZI, traded abnormal volume and faded off on Friday. So there's significant overhead resistance and potential supply now in these names. So in an opportunity like this, I like to look for a pushback into a potential area of supply, a previous area of where the stock failed and a lot of volume traded is now down above that level. Um, I like to use VWAP as a guide for this. Um, and I look for the stock to push back into those potential areas, failing intraday, offering a very good risk reward in order to get short. Um, but it is very important to remember in stocks like this when trading them, 
you know, always keep in mind the float size, always keep in mind locate availability and how that might impact the price action, all right? And um, you wanna gauge the overall psychology, right? So therefore, if they pop and reclaim their multi-day VWAP, right? Day one VWAP will become the two-day multi-day VWAP on Monday. Um, if they reclaim, you don't wanna be fighting and battling the stock. A short trap secondary squeeze might very well take place. Um, so it's essential to just wait for confirmation and to not be too biased. Simply put, plan the trade, trade the plan. If it doesn't confirm, don't get married to the stock, move on, look for opportunity elsewhere. Just important to remember that. But let's look at the exact plan in BNCI and what I'm looking for now that you know a little bit of the um, backstory for the specific focus. So I'm looking for a push in BNCI into the 283 area. So this is also gonna be around what will become the two day VWAP this week. Um, and they're off the three, four day view up, obviously. Um, I'm looking for a push back into this area. Um, we might very well find some supply and resistance on a push, quick push back, whether it occurs on Monday, on Tuesday. Um, but first test, we might get some failure. Reason why is a lot of volume. Most of the volume has been traded above this area. So if we get a push back into this area, um, and hypothetically, I was long from three, and the stock traded to the you know mid to low twos on Friday, we get a push back, I'm almost at break even on Monday, I would take that opportunity realistically to get out, hypothetically, um, and that's what creates these lower highs and selling pressure. So we have a lot of overhead resistance that could result in that um, outcome. Um, so I'm gonna be looking for a push into that area, a failure uh, intraday to get short versus the high of that move, and then looking for a swing short, um, just a full day swing short position back toward the mid to the low twos. Very similar plan and thought process in AIMD. AIMD, um, similarly, I'm going to be looking for the stock to push toward the 350 area as well. Um, got a nice lower high there intraday. This is what the VWAP will be multi-day on Monday. So I'm gonna be looking for a push back into this level on Monday or throughout the week once it settles down, maybe we get a dead cap bounce um, to get short intraday once we have that failure and confirmation, only if we get that confirmation and failure um, for a short and a move back towards the lows from Friday. Um, so those are my plans um, as it stands right now and um, wishing you all good luck. Have a great trading week and I will see you all next week. So you're an active trader, not doing as well as you want, not doing as well as you deserve, and you just can't figure out why you can't become profitable no matter how hard you try. Well, let me show you why. This is your competition, the traders in this room. This room right here is full of elite traders, some of whom are making seven and even eight figures a year. In fact, our top guys have made nearly 20 million each and net trading profits in a single year. Let's head to my office so I can share more. So you're probably used to seeing videos of lavish trader lifestyles, trading gurus, trading off of a laptop for an hour a day, heck, maybe even 15 minutes a day, and then them relaxing on some secluded beach for the rest of the day. Well, all I can tell you is that our traders train like pro athletes. They live and breathe the markets, and are continually working on their trading skills. Because at our firm, that's what we found it really takes to make it in this game. I'm Mike Bellafiori, co-founder and managing partner of SMB Capital, one of the world's top proprietary trading firms located in Midtown Manhattan. And we're always looking for trading talent to hire and develop. And not just to trade in-house on our desk, but also to trade from their own home, entirely using our firm's capital. And we have numerous traders doing just that, allowing them to make upwards of seven figures trading the firm's capital without risking their own money. But to even get a shot at something like that, you need to have the right training. That's why we're doing a new free online presentation in which we share how you can get an interview with SMB to become an in-house or remote trader, trading firm capital without risking yours and gaining access to all of our firm's coaching and resources. And the best part, you don't have to be a profitable trader yet. In fact, we prefer to mold profitable traders with our methods and our techniques. That's why we have just three simple criteria 
that can earn anyone an interview. We're looking for highly ambitious and determined traders who fit our culture first and foremost. So if you believe that could be you, sign up for the free one hour online presentation by clicking the link that's in your top right corner of your screen now.